Hi everyone, this is John Dickinson. Welcome back to my channel and to another Blender Sub-D modeling tutorial. This week we're going to have a go at this pointed mortise doorknob. I thought this was quite an interesting shape. It took me a few minutes to work out the best approach, but I think I've nailed it. Here's my finished version. Looks pretty close to the image and it's all quads. And we're going to be touching on an area we haven't looked at before, which is creasing under subdivision using it for both this knob section and this base. So I think you'll find that quite useful if you haven't got any experience with creasing. And before we jump into a new document, I just want to answer a question that I got recently about these blue faces. And the reason these faces are blue is because face orientation is turned on. And you might be thinking, hey, hang on a sec, when I turn face orientation on, I get red and blue faces. And that's because I've changed my theme. Those of you who don't know, I've switched across from Cinema 4D and I was quite used to having the reverse normals show as a pale blue. So let me just show you how I set up my preferences. Just by pressing F4 and then P, quick way to open up preferences. Clicking on themes, twirl down 3D viewport and just down here, you'll see face orientation back and front. Now for the back, I've changed this from red to a pale blue. And also, I've just taken the alpha down to about 0.5. So that makes that semi-transparent. For the front, it's still the same default color, but the alpha is zero. Because we don't really need to see the front faces. If they're not flipped, then I don't really care. All I care about are the flipped faces, the back ones. So that's why I've got that set up the way I have. And checking this on, because it's off by default, and then just coming over to defaults and choosing save startup file just means that's going to be on by default. And that way when I'm working, I can instantly see when a face is reversed rather than discovering a texture error later on and realizing that I've got a reversed normal. Okay, so let's get started with a new document by choosing file, new, general. It's going to delete this cube. Probably should save that as a startup file. Anyway, tilde, right view, shift A, mesh, and we're gonna start with a UV sphere. Settings for this are eight segments and 16 rings, perfect. Leave everything else as it is. Tab, now we're gonna use proportional editing. What's the keyboard shortcut? O. Oh. One for verts, select that top one. And for this, we're gonna choose an option I hadn't used yet, which is sharp. Okay, so we'll press G for grab, Z, and pull it up like that. Remember you can roll your mouse wheel in and out. Now we wanna keep a slight curve on there, not much. Maybe something like that looks pretty good. And Alt-Z to go into X-ray mode. We'll just get rid of those. Remembering that for the move tool, I have drag set to select box, not to tweak. Just so I can drag that box around there with the move tool still selected. Delete vertices. Select this one and we'll press S for scale. And we've still got proportional editing active. So that gives us that nice curve. Okay, something like that. We may need to squish it down a little bit more. Just select everything. O, S, Z. Just squish that down. Okay, that looks pretty good. Alt C, two. Alt click to select that loop. E for extrude, right mouse button, S to scale. Bring that into about there. We'll just come to that side view again. This is right orthographic. E, Z. Pull that down a bit. I'm just being arbitrary with these amounts, just eyeballing it. Shift R to repeat. S to scale. We want that to be, I think, about there. E, Z. Maybe something about there is okay. S to scale. Okay, that looks all right. 
do that once more. E, right mouse button, S to scale. And E, Z, just pull that down like that. Seems okay. Once it's under subdivision, we may just make that a little thinner. All right, so next, let's select sharp edges. And we'll just adjust the sharpness. Bring that down till we get right up to the top there. That's good. Now, we don't want this ring here, so we'll press Control, Alt, and Shift. Just deselect that. We don't want this one. And we don't want this one, so we'll press Alt and Shift to deselect that. And that. And that. Getting rid of the ones we don't want. And we actually don't want this one either, so just get rid of that one. I think that's everything. Okay, so now we're going to set the mean crease. One way to do that is just to hit N and just come over to Item and you can increase the mean crease here. Shortcut is to hold down Shift and E and just drag to the right. Drag all the way to the right, you'll get this pink outline. And if we check that again, you can see mean crease is set to one. So one is the maximum, like that. I think we need to select one more edge. Just gonna grab this one, Shift E, and just drag that to the right as well. Okay, so. Sub D surface. We want a render level of one. And we'll just tab to go into object mode and apply. Give space. So now we've doubled the subdivision and we've kept those creases nice and sharp. So let's just clean up a little bit. We'll just alt click, get rid of that one, control X. I think everything else is okay. So we'll just add another one down the bottom here. E, Z, bring that down. S to scale, just gonna flare this out a little bit. E, Z, just a little bit more like that. We might just grab these and just scale this out. Now, if yours isn't scaling from the center, just make sure that you have medium points selected. That looks pretty good. All right, so if we just drop this into another sub-D surface, we've still got the main crease in there, so it's not really gonna change much. You can see it's, it's smoothed out there and it's smoothed out there, which is good. We don't wanna use this main crease now. We actually wanna put a bevel on this. So I'll just turn that off for a sec. And we need to select these edges so that we can bevel them. So we could go through and just select these again, or we could just select one edge and press Shift G to select similar and choose crease. So there we go, we've reselected those. So don't get rid of your creasing too early because it's really handy for reselecting those edges. So now we can just come over and just get rid of that crease. We probably want to just add that one in as well. And that one. Control B for bevel. Roll the mouse wheel once. Just to add that extra loop in there. Hold down P, drag to the right. To give that a shape of one. And we don't want these too tight, so I think that's actually pretty good. Now we can just tab across to object mode, and there we go. So Let's just right click and choose Shade Smooth. And we'll also just come over to Object Data Properties and turn on Auto Smooth. Ah, looking nice. Okay, so now that we've subdivided that, we can probably get rid of a few loops. So let's select this one and these ones. Just every second one in here, just do this manually. And this one as well, Control X. There's still enough loops in there to hold that curvature quite nicely. 
What about down here? I think that'll probably be okay. What if we just ring select these and just come over to edit and loop tools. Make sure you've got the add-on turned on in your preferences. Space those out. Does that change that much? I think actually we will do that. Just like that. Nice and even. Alt click, control B. Let's just add a loop in there. Actually, I wonder what we might do is we'll go control X, control R, and just roll a few loops in there like that. Just to make them as square as possible. That looks nice. Very nice. Just quick save. Next, let's take a look at the top and see what we can do about this pole. First of all, what we'll do is just grab this outer loop and the quickest way to make that into a circle is to use loop tool circle like that. Going to undo that and make sure that didn't affect the shape too much. That's pretty good. Let's just remove those faces, select that, and Q for my quick favorites, grid fill, you can press Control F. So that fills it up, but obviously it's very flat, so let's see if we can round this out a little bit. And once again, O for proportional editing. Now we don't want point this time. This time we'll go for smooth. And G, Z. Now our area of influence is way too big, so we'll roll the mouse wheel. That we want to round this out. Something like that. We can probably just turn that off now and just pull this one down a bit like that. How does that look? That's pretty good. That's great. So that's got rid of that pole. Maybe we can just, just pull that down just a wee bit like that. Okay, that looks nice. And just looking at this other reference image, I think this is a little too wide. So we probably just need to scale this down a bit. So tab. Now we need to change the 3D cursor position in order to do that. We could just select these and control plus on the numpad just to make sure they're all selected. But if I hit S now and scale, you see how it scales downwards? It's not what we want. So let's go two for edge mode. And shift S and we'll say cursor to selected and see how that drops that down right in the middle of that loop. Now we can select these, control plus. We want to come up to transform pivot point and choose 3D cursor. And we're going to scale this. So S and that slides along there perfectly now. We're to about there. Two. GG, slide that back. Nice, okay, I think that's about right. Okay, now for the base, we're gonna use a circle. Shift A, mesh, circle. Verts is gonna be eight, just to match the original UV sphere. And you can see that fits perfectly around there. We're gonna leave the radius at one. Just move this down. We could snap it in there if we wanted to. Let's just turn on vert snap. Hold down control and just snap that to there. That's good. Just overlap slightly because this is inset into the plate. Tab. F to fill. You can see we want two insets. The rounder one on the inside and the eight-sided one on the outside. 
So we'll inset. This can be our inner one out there. Then we'll do Control R and we'll just do this outer one. Grab the outer loop. Pull that down. E, C. E, right mouse button, S. And we'll just grab this face. E, drop that down. We're going to delete that as well. So X, delete faces. And also press delete. Let's have a quick look and see how that looks with a sub D surface. I think that's going to fit pretty well. Might just turn on shade smooth. It should be okay. All right, so you can see how dropping that into the subdivision surface modifier has smoothed everything, which is not what we want. We want to add some creases in here. So that means selecting some edges. Go turn off edit mode. Might just hide the knob for a sec. Edge mode. And what's the quickest way to select this? Let's see. Shift Alt, Control Alt, and Shift to select that ring. Same again, and same again. Let's just view the subdivision surface again in edit mode. And now press Shift E. Hold that down and drag to the right. And you can see how that sharpens that all out. Okay, we've missed one. Let's undo. Missed two actually. We need this one and this one. Try that again. Shift E. It's nice seeing it take shape when it's under subdivision surface. Okay. Come down and make sure auto smooth is turned on. It's better. So you can see the importance of the subdivision surface. I just want to bring auto smooth down a bit like that. That's better. Not that it really matters because we're going to be putting bevels on this in a moment. First of all, let's just come back to our sub D and apply. Now we wanted a level of two, that's perfect. But it's left us with a few extra loops. So we can probably clean this up. No sense leaving loops in there that aren't necessary. That's better. Okay, so now we're ready to add the bevels. So how did we select the edges again? Let's select one. What's the keyboard shortcut? Shift G and select crease like that. And again, we can come up and just get rid of the mean crease now. Control B and just bevel this out. Something like that. Drop that back into another subdivision surface. There we go. Okay, so now we're just ready to put in the screw holes. Now this is only on four sides, so three, just drag, make sure you get the right one selected. And there. I to inset, something like that. Loop tools, circle. Fantastic. I to inset again, just to allow for the countersink. We'll drop that down. Just turn off edit mode, like that. 
Now I wonder if our screw would fit in like that. Maybe we need to press Alt S. Just move back on the normals like that. Alt E, extrude faces along normals and just pull that down a little bit like that and just delete faces like that. Come down and select these edges. Control B, and just put a little bevel on that. Made flat, shade smooth, should be okay. Let's come and just check we've got this turned on. I'm going to bring that up now. You can see how we're getting faceting in there. We'll bring auto smooth up. We've got the bevels in there now, so everything's locked in place. Turn that back on. How does that fit? Does that fit okay? That's pretty good. All right. Let's take a look at that with a matte cap on. Nice. So all quads. Nice little sub D workflow there. If you wanted to flatten out the knob a little bit, you could just come into X-ray mode, just grab a chunk of it like this and just use proportional editing again. So G, Z, and just make sure you roll with mouse wheel. And just bring that down if you wanted to make it a little flatter. Not too far. Like that. Very nice. Okay, so hopefully you found that useful. Remember to like and subscribe. Leave a comment if you have any questions. But for now, this is John. Have fun with your modeling and I'll see you in another tutorial.